the companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of everything that I told you. Hmm. None of us is born a Christian. We can't become Christian by long walks in the woods or by being born in the right neighborhood to perfect Christian parents. You're not Christian by some innate natural inclination that you brought into the world when you were born. Each of us has to be led into this faith. Somebody's got to find a way to tell us the good news so that we hear this news as news for our good. Someone has got to teach us. One of our great mistakes is to present the Christian faith as natural, common sense, that knowledge that everyone already knows by virtue of being born. No. There's nothing innate about this faith. As the Christian philosopher Søren Kierkegaard said, truth does not arise from any human heart. You can't come upon Jesus through walks in the woods or rummaging in your ego. Somebody's got to make you Christian by telling you a story you can't tell yourself. Somebody had to hand it over and you had to receive it. One of Augustine's favorite scripture passages is from Paul. What do you have that you have not received? 1 Corinthians 4, 7. When it comes to our having faith, the Christian faith, it's gift all the way down. Every person here had to receive this faith from the hands of another. Somebody had to teach you about Jesus. We're all immigrants into this kingdom, into this faith. Everybody here is a naturalized citizen. Everyone here had to cross over the border into the kingdom of God. No Christian is self-created. Each of us believes only on the basis of having received the gospel from some evangelist sent by God to hand over the truth about God. That, that this is news, good news, implies that the gospel does not arise from us, but rather must come to us. It must be told to us, be, be given us. Calling this truth news also implies public truth, public, meant to be announced to everyone. When he carefully read Romans 9 through 11, uh, the great missionary Bishop Leslie Newbigin characterized Christians in this way. Quote, uh, we're in a position of having to receive salvation from the hand of others. Salvation can only be in mutual dependence and relatedness. Salvation is intrinsically corporate, a gift, first to Israel and then surprisingly to the Gentiles. That is even to outsiders like us, all naturalized citizens of the kingdom of God. The advocate, the counselor, this Holy Spirit, becomes that mysterious, sometimes unconscious way that we are given all we need to know to be faithful disciples. Christians are nothing without the Holy Spirit. And in the gift of the Spirit, Jesus promises us that he will give us what we need to be faithful. Oh, that is the grand comforting message uh, that the Spirit enables us to proclaim today. Today's gospel has the, a promise that's very specific and it's utterly essential, this gift that is given us by Jesus. Jesus, getting ready to depart from his disciples, promises them the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
will teach you all the things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Without the empowering and prodding of the Holy Spirit, the church is always in danger of becoming just another well-meaning, sometimes helpful, merely human organization. It is one reason why so few congregations attempt anything risky and demanding it is that they are attempting to be the church on their own, limiting their work to what they on their own are able to accomplish? Huh. Come, Holy Spirit. I hope that you'll agree with me uh, when I say that it's reassuring to hear that the Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of everything. It, it's reassuring because none of us is born Christian. We've got to learn this faith. And in the Holy Spirit, we see that God loves us enough to keep teaching us all we need to know to be with God. Nothing's going to be held back or, or whispered only to just a select inner few. <laughs> Jesus tells us some astounding truth. But it's truth that is so truthful, well, it's easy to forget. Therefore, the advocate, the counselor, reminds us. Here's truth we can't teach ourselves. Truth that is not only a great mystery to us, but also truth that we, in our human sin, cannot attain on our own. Therefore, the advocate, the counselor, the Holy Spirit is a truth teller. It's easy enough to think like a Christian when you're sitting here inside the confines of our church. But we spend most of our lives outside the sacred precincts of this congregation. Thankfully, the Advocate, the Counselor, the Holy Spirit is with us forever, at all times, all places, helping us to be the disciples Jesus calls us to be, bringing to mind things that we might otherwise forget. I got a friend who, at midlife, decided that he just must learn how to fly. Uh, so he signs up for flying lessons at the local airport. He had a great flight instructor and uh, so good an instructor that my friend said he felt growing anxiety in himself as he went through the course, as he contemplated that day when he would wave goodbye to his flight instructor and he'd take the plane up for himself. How would he function when he was up there in the clouds alone? Well, that day finally came, but when it came, my friend said that he was surprised by a sense of self-confidence. Well, not really confidence in himself, but confidence in his good instructor. He said, he had taught me so consistently, said my friend, that so repeatedly, so reassuringly, I just knew what I had to do. I could almost hear my instructor as if he were right there in the cockpit with me, speaking to me, saying, okay, now you know, first do this, now take the next step. Huh? In a way, I think that's just how Jesus, the teacher, speaks to us today. As Christians, we're always beginners. We're always amateurs. But Jesus never expects us to walk his narrow, demanding way alone. He doesn't expect us to have the right words to say to others in his name, on our own. He gives us his Holy Spirit to continue to teach us, reassuringly to guide us. Now, go forth from this time of worship into the world in Christ's name. But I want you to remember this. A good teacher goes with you.